So as a first step for this video, let's go to the configure menu and from there, let's go to the station options. The station options dialog box appears. Let's go to execution tab and let's confirm that enable tracing is enabled and allow tracing into setup cleanup option is also enabled. Let's click OK to close the station options dialog box. So each step in a sequence contains uh, properties. All steps have a common set of properties which determine when to load the code module for the step, when to execute the step, what information test stand examines to determine the status of the step, whether test stand executes the step in a loop, but conditional actions occur after a step executes. Steps can also contain additional properties the step type defines. We can use the properties tab of the step settings pane to examine and modify the values of properties of a step. So let's load the computer to sequence we created in previous video. Let's select our video test step we created in the previous video. Let's go to the properties tab. So let's go to the preconditions. A precondition is a set of conditions for a step that must evaluate to true for test stand to execute the step during the normal flow of execution in a sequence. So we will define a precondition so that the video test step executes only if the power on step passes. So let's click this precondition builder button. This launches the precondition builder dialog box. So let's go to the insert step status and from there let's select power on. And then let's click insert step pass. The conditions control now contains the string pass power on. This indicates that the step executes only if the power on step passes. Let's click uh, OK to close the precondition builder dialog box. And our condition is now vis uh, visible in the preconditions expression. So let's now go to the post actions. In this tab, we can specify what type of action occurs after the step executes. We can make the action conditional on the pass fail status of the step or any custom condition expression. So from the on fail, let's select terminate execution. So let's now go to looping.
On this panel, we can configure an individual step to run repeatedly in a loop when the step executes. We can use the loop type ring control to select the type of looping for the step. Test and determines the final status of the step based on the number of passes, failures or loop iterations that occur. When we change the value of a property, test stand shows the new value in bold to indicate that it differs from the default value. So let's set the loop type to fixed number of loops. Let's keep the number of loops to 10. Let's set loop result is fail if less than let's set it to 80 percent using these settings test stand executes the video test step 10 times and sets the overall status for the step to failed if fewer than eight of the iterations pass so let's confirm that the settings column on the steps pane of the sequence file window shows that the video test contains a loop, a precondition and a post condition. We can use the tool tips to verify the values for each setting. Let's save the changes. So let's go and check uh, run the test. Let's go to execute and let's select single pass. So we are into now execution window and the display dialog box has appeared let's let's set it to fail the video test so now power on test rom ram and now we are in video test and we are going through the indexes the loops six seven eight nine and we are done since the post condition was that the test must fa uh, pass for the rest of the tests to continue and it did not pass therefore it was terminated so here is the report and it shows that the video test had failed number of loops were 10 and there were no passes all 10 tests failed which which is shown here by indexes So let's close the execution window.